our devotional thought inside uh, says, our publishing houses. The strength acquired in prayer to God, united with individual effort in training the mind to thoughtfulness and caretaking, prepares the person for daily duties and keeps the spirit in peace under all circumstances, however trying. The temptations to which we are daily exposed make prayer a necessity. In order that we may be kept by the power of God through faith, the desires of a mind should be continually ascending in silent prayer for help, for light, for strength, for knowledge. But thought and prayer cannot take the place of earnest, faithful improvement of the time. Work and prayer are both required in perfecting Christian character. We must live a twofold life, a life of thought and action, of silent prayer and earnest work. All who have received the light of truth should feel it their duty to shed rays of light upon the pathway of the impenitent. They should be witnesses for Christ in our offices as verily as in the church. God, God requires us to be living epistles, known and read of all men. The soul that turns to God for its strength, its support, its power, by daily earnest prayer, will have noble aspirations, clear perceptions of truth and duty, lofty purposes of action, and a continual hungering and thirsting after righteousness. By maintaining a connection with God, we shall be enabled to diffuse to others through our association with them the light, the peace, the serenity that rules in our hearts and sets before them an example of unwavering fidelity to the interests of the work in which we are engaged. With many who are laboring in our offices, there is an almost entire absence of the love and fear of God. Self rules self-controls, and God in heaven scarcely enter into the mind. If these persons could see that they are upon the very borders of the eternal world, and that their future interest will be determined by their present action, there will be a marked change in every hand employed in these offices. But many who are engaged in the sacred work of God are paralyzed by Satan's deceptions. They are asleep on the enchanted ground. Days and months are passing while they remain careless and unconcerned as though there were no God, no future, no heaven, no punishment for neglect of duty or for shunning responsibilities. But the day is fast approaching when the, ease of, when the case of everyone will be decided according to his works. Many have a fearful spotted record in the ledger of heaven. Many we make clear our ledger in heaven. <laughs> Are there a custom here? Let's uh, stand and repeat the fourth command. <clears throat> Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all of thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rest the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and the hour.